looking to make your RPG games a little spookier now the nights are closing in? Ready to swap your fantasy adventures with ghosts, ghouls, and some eldritch abominations? Well, you're in luck, as I've got five horror RPGs that will leave your group screaming, whether you're after Nordic folk horror, modern day mysteries, or something in between. Shiver is the Swiss army knife of horror RPGs. It's system neutral and specifically set up to let you indulge in any classic horror tropes from movies, shows and books you already know and love. Avoid iconic slasher villains at summer camp, fight aliens on a spaceship, jump in a van with your dog and hunt ghosts and more. The mechanics are there to help you play out any story you want. There's a lifeline that ticks down the more trauma you go through till you meet a grisly end. The skills are flexible, allowing you to react however you want, from picking locks to using improvised weapons with custom dice that help you determine all of these outcomes while keeping things narratively driven. There's a doom clock that makes sure the terror keeps creeping in throughout the story, building to a climactic ending because what's horror without a little drama? From the lights going out to the friendly bus driver being killed off and escape route sabotage, the clock's mean time is always against you. There is a chance for combat too, but it's still relatively simple as, let's be honest, you don't generally stand a chance facing the terrifying monsters that you fight. For players, you'll be picking one of the archetypes and subsequent backgrounds which let you be everything from the cheerleader and the stoner to the sheriff and the final girl. So if you want fully flexible fear, then Shiver should give you goosebumps. <laughs> If your idea of a terrifyingly good time leans more into the folk horror, then the Vaisen RPG has all the creepy creatures you could want. Set in Northern Europe during the late 19th century, you play investigators tasked with tracking and neutralizing Vaisen, the monster from fairy stories that lurk in the dark. With burgeoning industrialization disrupting the natural world in Scandinavia, Vaisen are getting increasingly troubled and violent. You have to work out what strange being haunts a local community, research how to face them, and then deal with the problem. And that's rarely just to kill them. Being weak and knowing you can't fight something always makes for a better horror game, and Vezen is a prime example of that. You're only human, and these are supernatural entities. Instead, you'll be binding them with steel and spider silk, driving them mad with church bells, or if you dare, quietening them with a marriage proposal. However, that's a promise you will never want to break. As players, you can be anything from a military officer to a servant, a writer, or a vagabond. The thing that ties you together, though, is the sight, which allows you to see the Vesen and means you're one of the few who can actually help the world. Vesen is a fantastically spooky setting, and the illustrations of Johan Ergerkranz throughout bring the whole game together. If you're looking to escape modern society and head for snowy wilderness, then Vesen is calling. I've already made an entire video on why this is one of my absolute favorite RPGs, so you can go and watch that if this piques your interest. But for a quick overview, Delta Green is basically modern day Call of Cthulhu. It tasks you to be government agents investigating strange goings on and covering them up so the general public never learn of the things that go bump in the night. It's very much like X-Files the RPG, so you can play the classic FBI agent or even a postal worker or park ranger. You're flown out to a random location, given a cover story and have to investigate. The game allows for anything you'd see Mulder and Scully face. Cults, aliens, cryptids, cursed dolls, government experiments gone wrong, anything you like or don't like. You can try to solve the case via a crime or strange rumor, but your main goal is always to cover it up. Mislead local authorities, lie to witnesses, sometimes even pin the crime on someone else. 
Not only does it make for a ton of tough decisions, it means you feel utterly alone. You can't call anyone to help. If you hear a noise in the basement, you have to investigate. This driving force means you end up in really scary situations, and what's better for a horror game than that? Oh, and here's me spookily jumping in filming on a new day. Why? Technical things, ghosts, ghouls, pick your poison, but hello, I am here and I want to spook. Bluebeard's Bride is an RPG based on the French fairy tale about a woman discovering her wealthy husband has murdered all of his previous wives. All players are the titular bride, exploring her husband's house and each of you take on part of her psyche. The mother may be a confident force, while the virgin gentler and more naive. There are five possible character playbooks to pick from, but you don't need to have all of them in a session, and if one of you takes too much trauma, then that part of the bride's personality shatters, losing herself piece by piece. As the GM, you lead players through this twisting supernatural house of horrors. Enter a door on the first floor and leave on the third. Watch the sun set in the span of a corridor. Take on the role of anxious and obnoxious servants stalking the grounds. All of the game leads to the final door. Will the bride enter, will she peek, or will she run for her life? Collect evidence for and against your husband and make your decision together. It's a wonderful gothic horror that gives you creative freedom to torment players in a grisly house with tons of fairy tale flavor. Ten Candles is not just a game, but a ritual. It does what it says on the tin. One game master and any number of players will sit around ten actual burning candles, your only light source for a game that asks you to turn out every light and play at blackest night. While it works in any setting from sci-fi to western to high fantasy, one thing is always true in the world you inhabit. The sun has gone out and the world has been steeped in darkness. Your characters are some of the few remaining survivors, desperately running from a mysterious and intangible force that lurks in the darkness known only as them. Rolling a pool of d6s equal to the amount of candles that still burn, all you need is a 6 to make things happen. The game is nicely loose and story driven with minimal rules to interruptions to break your immersion. But with every roll that fails, a candle is snuffed and a d6 is taken away from you, worsening your odds for the rest of the game. And so it continues until hope dwindles away and your lights get dimmer and dimmer. Even a candle mistakenly blown out will trigger a fail state. When the final candle goes out, so too do your protagonists, as the world is completely submerged by the dark. Ten Candles is the perfect tragic horror experience for those not looking for a happy ending, but an atmospheric, tense and immersive horror experience with their friends. Okay, what if that, but a little silly though. <laughs> Dread has a very similar concept to Ten Candles where your character's deaths are an inevitability from the start of the game. But instead of the tense and haunting presence of a naked flame that could go out at any second, instead it's Jenga, or sorry, Falling Blocks puzzle game. Whilst Dread can be scary, it definitely feels more like a B-movie type of horror. Wherever you do actions in a game of Dread, instead of rolling dice, you'll be pulling one or more blocks from the tower. No matter how visceral your game master's descriptions of the actions are, the act of pulling a block from a Jenga tower is inherently silly, and watching it fall will always bring a round of laughter from the group, even if it means your character has died as a result. Which, yes, that's how a character's death works. How delightful. One thing that Tower is great at providing though is that tension. Actions do feel impactful if they are a little silly because one wrong move could spell disaster. Especially when someone leans on the table when a challenge isn't even being resolved only to send the fragile wooden massive blocks tumbling down to the floor. 
So those are five horror RPGs you should absolutely play this Halloween and beyond. Let me know in the comments any scary games that you love and if you enjoyed, please give this video a like. For more amazing RPG recommendations, make sure to subscribe to Dicebreaker and head over to dicebreaker.com for daily news and updates on everything in the tabletop world. Enjoy scaring your players and until the next time, I hope you have a lovely day. Okay.